All right, guys, I'm live. I'm here and uh, I have a special guest here and that's the boss man right here. He's joining me because today we're talking about traveling with dogs in cars. And um, in order to talk about traveling with dogs in cars, I thought I should have a dog with me that's been in a car a lot. And that's Bosman. Janet took him all over the place. She took him in airplanes. She took him in um, cars and trains and planes and automobiles. And he's an amazing traveler. He's always been in a crate. He loves to travel in a crate. And that's a really, really, really important thing for, um, for a dog to, to be with you. So he's, he's, he's nuzzling the microphone a little bit. Boz is uh, almost 18 years old. He's, he's a little bit blind and he's a little bit deaf. But, um, but he's the best friend you could possibly imagine. He's the, I just adore this little boy. He usually just sits in my arms like this, like this. He just sits here like this. And, and he gets a lot of kisses like that. And oh, he yawns and he does all stuff like that. So anyway, um, I'm going to let uh, Janet take him, put him back in this crate because he loves to be in his crate. But I thought you might just want to say hi to one of my very, very, very best friends. There you go. Okay, so here we go. Janet's going to take him. Janet's kind of shy about being on camera, but... Nonetheless, I'm not. So um, we are, okay, Boz is waving goodbye to me. That's awesome. So I'm doing this chat differently today. I'm doing it with a new software that I just recently um, acquired. And I'm hoping it's going to be a little easier. I've been uploading stuff more with this and um, I don't really, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to work. It's a, it's a good trial, but it's going to give me a lot more creativity. I'm going to be able to do a lot more stuff like um, like play videos in the windows and um, and and show you things on my computer screen and I think it's going to just make for a much better presentation. I'm just really trying to up the game, give you guys the best service possible, and um, like I said, just you know always 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 get better. So um, hey, fine, hey Al, good to see you. You did not miss the live. That's great. Um, Laura, you're here. Everybody's here. Thank you guys for being here. Um, from Dusseldorf, every, all over the world. So what I want to talk about today is a really important piece, and that is traveling with your dog in a car. And I think it's really important because we don't, um, we, we don't do that that much, right? We don't do it properly that much. What we end up doing really is we end up kind of just throwing them in the car. And that's there's a lot of danger that goes into that. For a while there, I was selling these car crates and um, th they were crash tested crates. They were out of Sweden. They were really good crates. And I started researching why is this so important? Why is traveling with your dog in a crate so important? Because when I had my dog, Silly, my Sharpe, he would ride in the back seat. He would just jump in and just ride in the back seat. And it was great. And thank God I never had any problems with it. When I started researching this, oh, I should let me back up. When I got Goofy, he um, went in a crate in the back of my car, and you know, I had an SUV, so he was in in that crate, and he did fine in it. He he loved it. He really, you know, it was a soft side of crate, and I thought, okay, I got this under control, and I really did it for the purpose because I was going to um, what do you call it, to dog training, and I had to have him in a crate because I wanted to leave the back door open. I don't want to have the door closed. But then I started researching the importance of the different kind of crates and the different kind of restraints and the different things that can happen. And it's really monumental. So, I mean, I don't know how, how many of you guys are really going to agree with me on this. And I don't really care because I'm here to tell you some real serious facts. So those wire crates that people have in their car and Janet had one in her car when we first started, uh, when we first got back together and she didn't realize it either. But if you have an accident, and first of all, let's start out with no crate. So if you have a dog in your car and you have an accident and the door flies open or the window is open and the dog gets out, he's going to be in the, in the freeway, he's going to be um, on the side of the road or anything like that. When you then end up in um, a situation where you're, hang on, I'm giving Janet a pen so she can write me notes, which I love getting notes from her. Um, when you know if you let's say you just end up in an accident and then the um, paramedics come to rescue you or the police or something like that and they open that door it's a huge problem right the dog is going to get out and when the dog gets out you, you do have a problem now if you have a protective dog and the police or the ambulance is trying to get you out the paramedics or whatever they're going to get bit right which means they're going to they're not going to get to you until they call animal control or they're going to shoot your dog 
or they're just going to let your dog run out. And if the dog is out on a highway or on a road, you're never going to get the dog back. So that's one danger. Now, if the dog is in a soft-sided crate, the dog's not going to be protected. If the dog is not in a crate and you have an accident, the dog is a projectile just going through the car and can, can really can kill somebody. It can hit you in the head and kill you. It can hit a small child in the head, kill them. It's really, think about it, from 35 pounds to 65 pounds to 85 pounds, when you're stopping, it, that momentum keeps going. There's, a, there's a, the, the law of gravity, which I don't really understand, except I know it works, that this object will continue to stay in motion until it hits something. So if you're going 80 miles an hour and you hit a truck, that dog is still going 80 miles an hour coming through the car. It can go through the windshield. Can go, a lot of things like that can happen. So um, the wire crates, the danger with those is that if the dog... If you have an injury and the car gets somewhat crushed a little bit, those wires can break off and go through your dog and hurt your dog. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of different things that you can. Hang on, Janet's got her, got her phone on. Just turn the volume down. Honey. Just turn the volume down. So um, that's that's the danger when you when your partner, your life partner, is is also next to you and, and loves listening to you talk, which I'm amazed. I, she hears me talk. I probably talk in my sleep. Um, but when, when we're talking about traveling in the car w with a crate, you want it to be kind of a safe crate. So, you know, if you're, if you have a regular car, obviously you can't do, um, a regular a car crate, a safety crate because you don't have the room for it. So I, I understand that. I know not everybody has an SUV and I'm not one of these people who's going to preach stuff, um, that you should go buying these things. If you have an SUV, it's great. You can put a safety crate in the back. You can, there's different things I'm going to show you. Um, in fact, I'm going to just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try something here. So bear with me for a second. Okay. Look at this. See, this is my website here. Now, can you see that? My website's going to pop up on the screen. I'm trying to see how Janet's phone, how it works. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you my store and on my store, you can go here. Isn't this amazing? This is this new software that lets me do this, right? Is, I'm not sure. Janice not seeing it yet on her phone. <clears throat> but um, so when you go down here, all I want you to do later after this. Oh, it is working. Okay, good. Um, click on dog safety. And here's all these products. Please, if you buy these products, buy them through my store. I get a small commission on this. It means the world to me. I really, really appreciate it if you do. But these are products that I have used or currently use. And I, I can promise you, I have used or currently use all of these products. They're really the best. Um, yeah, and if you see bikers with their dogs in their lap, it's really ridiculous. This is a really good crash-tested harness. I've used this. Janet uses this one. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about harnesses in a second here. Um, this is the crate right now that Janet and I have in our cars, this Proline crate. We really like it. And then this is a really, really good crate as well, this Vario cage. So if you buy them, like I said, buy them from, you know, from my store because I do get a commission off of them. Now all I got to do is figure out how to get back to my, um, my, um, my screen and so I can see you guys. So you can see me again because right now all you're seeing is that. And I will figure that out in just one second. I knew something like this was going to happen. It's too funny. Um, all right, I'm over here. I'm going to move this aside. And now hopefully if I click over here, oh, there we go. Okay, now watch this. You're going to see me. Hey, here I am again. How about that? Is that amazing or what? So that's one of the special features that I obviously haven't, uh, haven't figured out yet. So anyway, um, let's look at, again, I'm trying to look at some of your comments. I'm not going to really spend as much time on the comments because what ends up happening is I get so wrapped in, into comments that people say it takes away from the chat and you're here to um, hear me chat, obviously, not to, I don't want to be interacting with people um, as much. So, so first of all, I'm going to address the question about how I feel about harnesses with seatbelt harnesses. And Harnesses are a very, very good option, right? It kind of, what your idea really is to get your dog into a confined area and they don't move around a lot. The more a dog moves, so the, the more freedom the dog has to move, the more likely that dog is to cause injury to him or herself or to someone else in the car. If you're looking at um, a good harness, it should be something that really straps into the dog or straps the dog in and then doesn't um, give them too much movement, right? The, the, this, the harness has to be strong enough to, to withstand the pull from that person. The, 
the um, the strap should be made of seatbelt material and it should be strong enough to not break, like your seatbelt shouldn't break. Now, um, the, 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 the question comes to mind that Janet just posed me is, do I bolt down the crate? So it's really important if it's in the back of an SUV and it's against the back seat and it can't travel naturally, you don't need to bolt it down. They all come with straps to strap them down because you don't want them moving. That's really, really, really critical. You don't want, and also the size of a crate is something that's real important. You don't want your dog um, moving around in the crate. Like Goofy is kind of spoiled. Goofy has a really big crate and Goofy likes to be um, very comfortable and stretched out. Where Dwayne and Jimmy have, the, the crate that Goofy is in is the crate that Dwayne and Jimmy are in, right? So does that make sense? There's a divider that goes down the middle and Dwayne and Jimmy take up the same amount of room as Goofy, which is insane because they weigh, it, Goofy is 60 pounds, 65 pounds, and Jimmy is like 60 pounds. So Goofy just kind of blobs out. Jimmy blobs out in the bed, Goofy blobs out in this crate. So you want the dog confined. And the reason for that is, is for the safety of the dog. This is not really necessarily about being comfortable it's about being um, safe. And the dog being in that crate should be confined, should be, it should be, should be tight, it should be snug, so that if you have an accident, the dog is in a confined area and they don't move around that much. The more they move in the crate, the more likely they are to get hurt. So that's the real crux of the issue, is that, that you want that kind of a situation. You want a nice, safe crate. You want it to be a soft crate. A lot of people use some of the other crates, and I'm actually going to be putting those crates um onto I'm, i work a lot with affiliate things so i give you a full disclosure you guys like the channel you like all this stuff i make my um my living by doing this and therefore um hang on janet showing me something what's this doug peterson yeah okay i'm gonna doug i'm gonna address that question because that's a very very good question janet points out the best questions to me so that i can kind of get to them um the the um what was I talking about, Janet? What was I talking about? The crate? Um, oh, so yeah, I get distracted easily. I've got, I've got totally ADD. I, I can't stay focused on one thing that long. Um, you want the dog confined in a crate. You want them in, with the littlest movement possible. That's going to make it the safest for the dog. You want, um, oh, I was saying the, my affiliate thing. So when I sell things on Amazon, stuff like that, I do get an affiliate commission. It's full disclosure. You guys don't pay anything more, but I'm just going to tell you this much. Whatever I am promoting, I might get a dollar, two dollar commission, whatever it is. I want you to know that because I want full disclosure on it because that's how I make my living. But I never, ever endorse a product that I don't use on my dog or that I wouldn't use on my dog or that I haven't used on my dog. I take this very seriously. I've got, I get so many people, so many companies who come to me asking me to endorse their products and I don't. Even for a lot of money, I don't because I'll only endorse what I 100% believe in. I want you guys to know that. So if I'm talking about a product, some things I don't get a commission on, some things I do, but I want you to know full disclosure that if I do, it's only a product I believe in. So um, there was a, a, was it Doug Peterson or something? Yeah, who said, who asked, what if your dog goes nuts in the crate when other dogs are around? Maya does that. Maya has, since I've gotten her, she has always gone nuts in the car when there's other dogs or even people walking by. She goes really, really crazy. You're going to have to control that. And the only way you're going to control that is really going to be through, um, through what do you call it? Through um, structure, one. Two, what I do with Maya is I put a bark collar on her. And as much as that sounds like kind of a bad idea, it's really important to control the dog. And if you don't control the dog, you got a big problem. If you don't control your dog, you have a huge, huge, huge issue because it doesn't give the dog a comfortable experience in the car. The dog should be relaxed in the car. And as much as a dog, and, and Doug, you'll, you'll be able to answer this. If a, if a dog is upset and barking and carrying on, that's not a pleasant experience, right? So if the dog can be made to have a better experience by doing something simple, like putting a bark collar on the dog, then you're going to have an easier time driving with that dog. Now, Maya will whistle and will whine and stuff like that, which is an annoying in and of itself. But... It is something that I look at and say, you know what, I'll tolerate that. But I don't want the dog going off barking, 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 lunging, because um, it's, it's just not, it's, it's not 
good for the dog. So that's really, really important. Now dogs, you know, I'm going to give you a little story that you'll probably really love or not. I was driving on my way home, Pacific Coast Highway, heading into Malibu, and there was all these cars stopped. And there was a dog running around on the northbound lane of PCH. There's two lanes where it was. And nobody could catch this dog. Nobody could catch it. It was a little dog and everybody was chasing the dog. Everybody was chasing the dog. It was oncoming traffic going southbound. It was a busy day. Cars every, I mean, just a lot of cars. So I got out of the car. I pulled my car aside. Janet wasn't with me this day. I started, I looked and I said, everybody just stand down. And I got the dog's attention. I whistled and I ran away from the dog as fast as I could. The dog came running up to me. I turned around, scooped the dog up. And I said, whose dog is this? We're not doing that. That's Goofy and Maya, uh, Goofy and Dwayne, sorry. Um, so I was able to catch the dog where nobody else could catch the dog. And I'm not telling you that to show off to you, but I'm telling you that because if you see a dog that people can't catch or that nobody can catch, don't chase the dog, right? The idea is when dogs are chased, they run away. What dogs do is they will chase something. So the dog chased me. Now, I'll tell you what happened because when I handed the dog back to the guy, he was crying and his girlfriend was crying and they said, thank you so much. Thank you. Blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I said, just curiously, what happened? And they said, well, you know, our dog never did this before. He's never, ever, ever done this before. But we had, we had him um, looking out the window and he jumped out. And do you know how many times I've gotten into a verbal fight with people when I see their dogs hanging out the windows and I say, don't let your dog do that, he's gonna fall out. And they go, ah, screw you, you don't know. My dog never jumps out. The story is your dog may never have jumped out, but at some point, the dog will either one, get excited by something they see outside, a squirrel, a dog, a cat, a person, a bicycle, a motorcycle, anything, one, and they'll jump out to chase it. Or two, you're gonna get over, go over a bump or swerve and you lose the dog, or three, you're gonna get in an accident and your dog is gonna go out, right? So those are important things to think about. Not withstanding the idea that if the dog has their head out the window and there's a pebble that comes up on the street and hits him in the eye, it's gonna blind him. When um, you know, the wind and there's dirt and dust, it's gonna get in their eyes, it's gonna hurt them, it's gonna get in their nose, it's gonna hurt them. And I'm, listen, I'm not that guy, I was raised we didn't have seat belts in the cars. I never wore a helmet to ride a bicycle until like I was in my 40s where I thought I'd actually fall off of a bicycle. And I fell off plenty of bicycles, broke my arms. Um, we, you know, we weren't raised with, you know, all the safety crap that kids have now. I mean, kids now live in a bubble. I mean, I'm surprised that, that they even survive because they they probably have no immune systems. But back in those days, we had it rough. You know, we skateboarded. This was in Jersey. And we, we had, we were, you know, in the heat of Florida summers, we were outside fighting, playing stickball in Jersey in the heat of the Jersey summers. So I'm not, I'm not that guy, right? I'm not that guy who's so, you know, living in a bubble and do this and do that. But I'm going to tell you that there are inherent risks. Now I'll tell you my other pet peeve, and it really does drive me nuts. And I almost got in a fist fight because I pulled a guy over about this once years ago. And that is dogs in the back of pickup trucks, right? I lived in the South for many years. And I, I I'm, you know, deep down in my heart, I'm probably more, I'm probably half Southern and half Jersey. But a dog in the back of a pickup truck, unrestrained is one of the dumbest things you can possibly do. It's cute. It looks so cool in the movies. The dog is in the back of the pickup truck. You're going down to the beach. You're going to the park. You're doing this. You're doing that. It's all cool. The problem is it's an incredible danger. It's a super tempting thing for a dog to want to jump out of that car and get killed. And that's really what's going to happen. Because if the dog gets out of the back of that car and you're on the highway, the dog's dead, right? The dog is dead. And now the other thing too is if the dog is restrained, on a leash and that leash is hooked to the side of the pickup truck and the dog jumps out. Now you're going to drag the dog to its death. And there was a, a story in the news, a couple of stories in the news, probably in the last three, four years that I looked at that I can't even look at them anymore. I don't even watch the news anymore because it just gets me so depressed. Um, where it showed this dog was on the back of a pickup truck and he jumped out 
And he was just dragged for miles and miles and miles and miles because you don't pay attention to it, right? You're driving, you got your music to, on, you got your air conditioner on, you're talking on your cell phone, you're texting, you're doing Instagram stories, you're doing all this stuff, right? And you're not paying attention to your dog in the back of a pickup truck and he's being dragged. So the only proper way to put a dog in the back of a pickup truck is to put him in a crate. That's the one thing. Now, there's other ways where you can do a tie down in the middle of the pickup truck and put a, a bolt in there and the dog should be tied where he can't even get to the sides, can't put his feet out. Because if he jumps out, you're screwed. The thing you've got to remember is if you have him restrained in the back of a pickup truck and the dog chews through that leash, they're gone. So these are all really stupid ideas, stupid things to do. I get it. It's fun. It's cute. It's cool. My friend Drew has... Um, a Bronco, which is a really bitchin' truck, and he's got his dog, Lucky, that rides with him. But you know what he does? He's really smart. He's got a really nice bitchin' harness that he bought, and the dog wears a harness all the time. The dog's always safe. Okay, we've got a question here from Jeff. All right, Jeff says, I'm driving from Texas to New York with a GSD and a Malin one next month. Would you uh, recommend anything different for long road trips? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I would just recommend crates. I would recommend you get some crates, and at the very, very least, put, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, the very Janet, so she, she's so smart. I mean, you think she's just pretty, but she's brilliant. She says food and water. You should have like a gallon of water in the car with you at all times because dogs, you know, don't sweat. They, they overheat. And if it's next month, it's July. And from Texas to New York, it's not a fun drive. I've driven across this country six times and I loved it. I, it, was, it was a totally solo thing I did. I always did it when I was a bachelor. I did it. Um, and it was like this guy thing, right? It was me and and my dog, my dog, Silly. Goofy never really traveled that much. We did most, mostly local stuff. But try your best to get um, some car crates. You know, if you can't do the super expensive, fancy ones that are on my site, just get yourself some travel crates, some plastic travel crates. It's not the best way to do it, but it, you would, especially a German Shepherd and a Malinois. I really, really, really would. Smaller dogs, I'm going to talk about that for a second now, because like Bosman and somebody here just said you have a mini schnauzer. Um, the, the, those dogs really travel well. They enjoy traveling. But what you're going to want to do with them is you're going to want to put them in a crate. And Janet has these crates that are really nice. What do they call those crates? Do you remember the name offhand? Um, yeah, Janet will go get it and, and, and I'll, I'll show it to you. It's a really, really nice soft travel crate and you can put it in the back seat. The um, idea is, you know, with a small dog, it's not going to be as big of an issue. And, I, you know, these are crates that you can take on the airplane with you. You can, um, <laughs> Matthew, your wife's smart, Matthew. Listen to your wife. Um, it, 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 it's, it's the idea of restraining the dog in the crate because it's small and then tying it down. So a mini schnauzer, a dachshund, a Yorkie, um, any of these smaller dogs, you can put in these crates and then you can put the handle of the crate um, there, there's a hole, I should say, there's a handle. It's, I'm kind of trying to explain it to you and show it to you at the same time. And the seatbelt goes through and you lock it down in the car. I, I showed that crate actually in one of my videos when I, when Boz and Janet and I went to, um, Washington state to do it, to do a thing. So, um, those are really, really, really good ideas. Um, I always take my dog's food with me. I mean, that's a really important thing because you don't know when you get there, if you're going to be able to buy food. Sometimes you can. And sometimes you can't. So make sure you pack the dog's food. Make sure you pack the dog's medicines. Have a little first aid kit. You know, have some Benadryl with you. A liquid Benadryl is always good to have. Have some gauze with you. Um, some Neosporin with you and stuff like that. So um, Dominica from Newcastle in the UK. Love your videos. Listen to your podcast when going for walks. Thanks for useful information. My pleasure. And I just kind of look at it. So here's this crate. Oh, it's sturdy products. And uh, yeah, and Alan, we're going to need to get this on the uh, store because I, I don't think we have it up there. But this is the sturdy products um, crate that we use. And what's really cool about it here is, put it over here so you can see it. It's you, you, you put the dog in here, and then like I was saying here, the, you sit this on your seat, and the seat belt goes right through here, and you can kind of lock them down. And this is that's Boz's personal travel crate. So it's I, I don't have the room here to show you all the, uh, the bigger... Um, crates that we have but again if you go to the store you'll see all all the products and i think that's uh, that's a really really good option so i'm just going to have um janet hand me the questions as they come over if you guys have any questions um, this is probably not going to be one of the longer chats but I, you know this is such an important piece for you guys because safety is really it your dog does not have the ability to make decisions on safety right they're just like two-year-old kids, they just, they just want to have fun. They just want to be crazy. 
you know, or just like 35 year old guys are just kind of stupid sometimes. Um, so it's up to you to be, you know, to make things safe. Who am I looking at here? Okay. Virginia. Couldn't it get too hot for them? Well, that's a very, very excellent point. So you have to make sure that your car has air conditioning and you make sure that you have, you know, ventilation as well. So think about that when you travel, when I traveled, um, cross country, I would always take my dog with me or I would park the car really close, like to in front, like, let's say I ate at a Denny's, which I've been known to do. I would park the car in front of Denny's. I would have, leave the engine running with the air conditioner on and I would take the key out with me. So a lot of the newer cars, you can do that. The older cars, if you have the metal, I don't know, does anybody even have, still have a car that has a real key? No, I don't think so, right? But you could just get an extra key made. But that's really, really important. And you hope you don't go into some really you know, bad area where they're going to steal your car and your dog. That's really most important for me. I don't care if somebody steals my car, but if they steal my car and, and my dog, they, they might have to die. So um, you want to make sure what, what we do also with, in our cars, we have those little Ryobi fans. They're, they're battery powered. They're great. You buy two $99 batteries. No, no, the, the Janet, she's so nice. She says, can I go get one to show you guys? It's so sweet. But those fans are really, really good to have in the car to keep, the, keep air. You want air moving, right? So a dog can survive in 90 degree or even 100 degree temperature if there's air movement and they have water. That's a really critical piece that people don't understand. But if the air is still and they don't have water, they can overheat. And that's a really important piece. So always have ventilation. If, you, if your car is stopped, this is why I like the metal crates that we have. Because the metal crates, hey, hey, stop it. I'm, on, I'm here talking to people. And you guys are acting like a bunch of goofballs. Um, the the air should keep moving so i like to, when i we can keep the backs of our cars open and lock the crate so the dog is still behind metal bars and nobody can get to the dog and the dog can't get to anybody and by the way i always put a sign up beware of dog or hands off dog or something like that because you're going to have some idiot who's going to let their kid put their fingers in the crate and the dog is going to nip or do something so i would really highly recommend that but if you can kind of keep the dog confined in the back keep a fan and keep water in there for me these kennel gear bowls i put on the side are really really good too okay cindy kadina my dog gets car sick what should i do first thing i would do is see your vet because a lot of times they'll give them some dramamine or something like that but if you're going to start out with start out by giving your dog a um a small exposure to the car, right? Just take them for around the block. Just have them sit in the car, start the car, start it like that. Because you, you, most dogs can get used to the car. It's, it's, it's the rarest dog that gets sick. But the important thing to look at is, are you overdoing it with the dog? Are you really, you know, really overdoing it with the dog? You're taking them too far of a ride too fast. Cause then, and especially if they've just eaten, it's not, not another, it's a, it's a bad idea. So, um, Okay, um, so Greg from London. So I'm going to grab that one second. Is that the one? Okay, see it, Janet. That reads my mind. Um, Greg from London said, we need to stop people leaving dogs in cars because alternators can catch fire. Cars burn in seconds. Why do people leave dogs in a car and go for food? Well, they go for food because they have to eat, right? So you can't get into this thing of like, first of all, dogs, cars, alternators don't catch fire when they're running. I mean, I've had cars for 40 years. I've never had a car's alternator catch fire when they're running. This is a ridiculous statement. Um, the car can catch fire when it's just driving. So um, my bigger concern is that your car will overheat when you're in the restaurant and that will be a big problem, right? So like with the police cars, they have alarms in them that will go off when the temperature reads, reaches a certain thing. I mean, in the, if you're, let, let me be clear. If you're traveling, it's the middle of the day and you're in Texas or you're in Georgia or, 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 or Tennessee or any of these, Oklahoma or any of these states where it's 100 degrees and you leave your dog in the car, <coughs> excuse me, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. Don't do that. Also be aware that you really even can't take the dog out of the car for a walk during those temperatures. The asphalt is 120 degrees. You can fry an egg on it. So you've got to plan these things. You've got to be a little bit more systematic. Like you can travel early in the morning and late in the afternoon during the day, just pull over or whatever. But you see these two knuckleheads in the background? Do you, can you guys see this? Look at this. This is, this is, my, my, this is my, my nutty family. I'm going to show you. Look at these guys. 
Hey. That's how I stop it. Okay. Um, but they're having fun, just so you guys know. Let's see. Jan's got another question for me. From Is it a Matthew question? The wife won't let me go over 40. Yeah, we already got that one. Yeah. We, he's got a good wife. you got a good wife. Janet insists on, you know, you know the old thing of like the car length? One, Janet insists on one car length for every mile per hour. It's supposed to be for every 10 miles an hour, but Janet says it's for every mile an hour. She swears that the CHP says it's one. So if I'm doing 60 miles an hour, I have 60 car lengths. And basically, I'm in Malibu, and um, the car in front of me is in, uh, in, in Pacoima. That's how Janet likes to drive. But it, she does it just for, it's just funny. Okay, um, yeah, so all these things, heat stroke, all these things are really important if the dog gets overheated. So you want to make sure the dog has access to water. You want to make sure there's plenty of ventilation, air moving. Remember, dogs go through, you know, dogs live in the Middle East where it's very, very, very hot. Dogs live in Florida, Arizona. Dogs live in very, very hot temperatures. They need to have access to water and they need to have um, ventilation. It's really, really important. If your dog gets warm, remember, you always want to cool the dog down from their stomachs as opposed to over their back. So you don't want to pour water on a dog's back when a dog is hot. You want them to kind of like lie down in a pool of water or use um, wet rags. Like the best thing to do is to put a wet towel on the floor and let them lay on it. That's really the best way to cool off a dog. And I was told that by a veterinarian because if the dog gets water over the top of them, you can put them in shock. So that's something to think about with overheating dogs. So um, we have any more questions? Yep, yeah, Jan's got one. And let Janet get all the questions ready. It's so much better because she's a, a better um, screener of stupid questions. Um, Daniel says, wow, sign up for your website and can't get a question answered. Well, Daniel, I'm going to tell you something. We did have an, an issue and, Dan, and uh, Alan found it. So if you asked me a question last week, that would have been the only time you ever didn't get a question answered. And I can tell you, if anybody is in here who is a member, they will tell you that I answer every single question. And there is a weekly video that goes up. And every week I answer, like last, yesterday, what happened is during the week, our, the member form that submits the question for some reason went down because we didn't update on our WordPress. So we didn't get several days worth of questions. And um, I feel horrible about that. I feel terrible. But I put a thing up that you'll have to re-ask the question. But the week before, I did 16 pages of questions. And those questions, I really got to tell you, is if you're members of my site, it's impossible for me. First of all, it's two things are impossible. One, is impossible for me to put up a two or three hour video of questions answered. But more importantly, I'd be willing to do that it's impossible for you guys to sit through two to three hours of me answering questions, droning on, looking at my face, talking, blabbing about these questions. I really suggest there's there, there to be really short questions for me, little quick ones. Like, what you know, what do I feed my dog? I can answer you that question. Well, what do I do here? What do I do there? Simple, simple things. And I'll, I'll always get to them. We're going to change the format. I'll probably be doing them more often as we get more and more members. But um, anybody who says that I didn't answer a question, you're wrong. I answer every single question. So please send that statement. Um, thank you, Lauren and Will. Yeah, I, I do. I do answer every question. And I take that personally because I really try to um, give you guys the best service possible for your membership. And I think everybody, I've, I've never had a complaint from a member um, where they quit and they said they didn't like the, the membership. Everyone who, who at some point leaves the site has always said they've gotten so much information, the dog's passed away, they're, tr they're now working with a really good balanced trainer in their area, and those are great reasons to leave. I've got no problem with that at all. So if you leave, um, if you join my site and you get a lot out of it and then you're kind of done, I think that's great. I, I don't take that personally at all. I want you to Get, I want to help you get started. I want to help you solve some problems. And if you're with me for a month or a year or whatever, that's what I'm here for. I take it personally and I take it really, really seriously. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for actually chiming in there. Um, anyway, okay. So, um, so uh, what's oh, Goofy is back. Goofy is back here lying down. Somebody asked where Goofy is. And uh, the silver shade on the car is good. But remember... You know, I would suggest using those window shades on your car when you're going to go out with your dog. Because when you come back in, the car is going to be incredibly hot. And those shades do keep the keep it a bit cooler. So anything you can do 
be, don't also when you first start your car, you know, maybe start your car, open the windows, hit the air conditioner, let it run full tilt for a while, because putting your dog into a hot car can also put them into heat shock. And that's the thing you got to really watch. Dogs don't sweat and people don't realize that, right? Like when you get in the car and you sit in there and you're sweating, your dog doesn't have the ability to sweat like that. And so they'll overheat, they pant and they sweat through their mouth. And if you don't give them the opportunity to cool off, you're going to have a problem. So crates are your number one thing. I like, I love, love, love. See you, AL. I'll see you. Uh, the, the number one safe, safest way to do it. You know, really good. The travel crates that I have on my, on my website, go to robertcabral.com, click on my store, and, um, and you'll see those are the crates. They're fantastic crates. They come in different sizes. They look really great. They're very safe for the dogs. If you can't do that, the, the safety harnesses that I also have on the crate. And also there's these things, these tailgate locks, which are on my site. I really, really like those because you can have your dog in a crate and you can keep the car open, right? The tailgate open. I first saw those years ago and then I found out that they had them on, on Amazon and Janet has one for, um, for her car and I have one for my car. And we love it, right? Because you have the dogs inside and then you have this the, the tailgate popped open. It works on um, SUVs only. But you can get them in small, like six-inch ones, I think. Yeah, four, five, six-inch ones all the way up to 12 to 16-inch ones. It keeps the tailgate open. People, The dog can't. There's there's ones, the, the original idea to those tailgate locks, by the way, was that you could have your dog in the car and the dog can't squeeze out through it because it's such a small um, opening. I don't really like using them like that. I like using them with a dog that's already in the crate. Jan's got another question for me. Who we got? Newt Blaze. Is it Newt? Knut? K-N-U-T? Check your store. Links and four pets pro line. Okay. Crash test to crate. Amazon code is unavailable. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to actually take a screenshot of that and I'm going to tell... Alan that we're going to get on that. Alan's my, my tech guy on the, on the website. So he's actually helped build this site to what it is today. He's done a fantastic, fantastic job. So, um, I, I'll, 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 I'll check out whatever we don't have. I took a screenshot of that. It's on Janet's phone. I got to make sure I get it, but sometimes they'll be out. Um, and I'll, I'll try to get you the right one. Okay. GT over in London, if dogs are left in cars, people do tend to get upset. Many will call police to attend a special, when they are seen panting. Yeah, so so he, here's the thing, you know, it's, and there's no shortage of animal psychos anywhere in the world. We've got them here in Los Angeles. But by the in fact, we could export a couple and be, be a really good place. People, people never get as nutty about anything as they get about animal rights, right? They just, they, they, they're going to play the morality police. They're going to do all these things. And the bottom line is if somebody leaves their dog in a car, panting is not a sign that the dog is, is in any distress. My dog pants just when he wakes up in the morning. That's not a big deal. And then calling the police, let the police do police jobs, right? You know, here now they passed a law. I think it was, I don't know, it was in California or in the whole United States that if a dog is in a car, you can smash the window, which is a really stupid idea. I mean, I get the, I get the meaning behind it, right? I, I get it. Somebody is a moron and leaves their kid in a car or their dog in a car and the animal or child dies. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. It's a horrible, horrible tragedy. Is it a tragedy or travesty, Janet? It's both. It's actually a travesty and a tragedy. And I get that part. But, you know, if you leave your dog in the car and your dog just happens to be panting a little bit, people get so psyched out, like, oh, I'm going to break the window. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. And let me tell you this much. If you break the window on that car and you open that door and that dog runs out and gets hit by a car, that's on you. That's a really stupid, stupid, stupid thing you did. So, sit tight, just back down, just make sure you know that, try to find the person, say, is there anything, whatever, are you okay? Is the dog okay? Most dogs will survive just fine in a shady area, the window cracked down a little bit, they'll be fine. Now, the thing you got to worry about is somebody stealing your dog and using them in a dog fighting ring, that could happen. So, um, but you know, just let's everybody just take a chill pill. Society is too insane. Stop watching the news. Stop looking on Instagram and Facebook for every stupid story that upsets you. Um, you know, my rule in the house is we don't look at that stuff. It's nuts. Laura, um, 
the police do smash the windows here in the UK. Yeah, well, that's really stupid, you know, because some people just leave their cars in. I mean, you know, people have lives, right? People don't understand that, you know, you might have your dog with you. And I'm going to tell you something. I kind of like people who leave their dogs in the car because they're not taking it in a store. And every time I go into a store and I see four dogs in the grocery store and then they have to lie and say they're service dogs, you can't really get around this, okay? Maybe you can't leave your dog at home. You're gonna, you got a couple errands to run. Maybe you're gonna be gone. Maybe you're heading to somebody's house or you're heading to a park or heading to you know, home from somewhere and you wanna stop and pick something up with your dog in the car and you're gonna leave them in the car. It's, it's really insane. People have just gotten too crazy. For me. I said to Janet yesterday, I said, you know, it's the first time I actually feel old looking at all these people completely psyched out with all these different, and everything is a cause now. As soon as something happens, and I'm not going to mention any causes because I know Janet's going to kick me under the table, but there's every five minutes, there's a new cause. Not mentioning any of the causes by name, none, but I can't stand it. Yeah. It's off topic, but Daniel... How? Okay, so he's, you've asked this question five times, Daniel, which you're off topic, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the question because Janet brought it to me. How old should a puppy be before I can take him on walks in public? Okay, I've answered that question no less than 10 times, but I'm going to answer it again here. If you have a puppy, the puppy must be vaccinated before you take it for walks where it's going to come into contact with organic matter, which would be grass, dirt, um, anything like sand, anything like that, to prevent parvo or distemper. They're very, very, very contagious. Generally, I'm not a veterinarian, I always disclose that, but generally a dog after their second set of vaccines has enough immunity, if the mother was also vaccinated, to have some kind of a, a immune system to that. The rule of thumb for veterinarians is the third series of shots. So that would be at 16 weeks. Now, you want to kind of socialize your dog before that. I totally understand that. So um, I would say when you get your puppy, which is generally when the dog has their second series of shots, you can start to take the dog to some places. Remember, concrete, Home Depot, your friend's house. Remember, if your friend's house, if it, Parvo and December can live in the soil for six months. That's, that's something that I never knew, but it's pretty, pretty amazing. Daniel, again, I was told to carry him by the by the lady at the Humane Society for six months, you're going to be in really good shape at the end of that six months. You don't need to carry your dog for six months. But you know what you might need to do is call a couple of veterinarians. And um, you, you, I know, you, Daniel, you're kind of going on and on about this. Um, the dog might get sick. The dog might die. I get it. It could happen. The dog can get hit by a car. The The, the risk you have of not exposing the dog to some... It's like people with their babies, right? They put the babies in bubbles. Like, you know, my mother basically, you know, left me out in the yard for a week. I'm just kidding. I, I know I'm gonna, somebody's going to, somebody's going to come, come, come and say something. Um, they're going to be exposed to things. You have to be careful. Like a, I would take them away from dog parks, dog beaches, um, where there's a lot of dogs, but get your dog out into areas, but check with a veterinarian to make sure that the dog has some immunity. That's critical. You can pull tighter tests on the dog too. And I want to help you, Daniel. I'm not being facetious, but I, I, I just want to kind of address it. In other words, if I give you an answer and then you ask me another question about that answer, I've probably thought about that question that will be coming before I gave you the first answer. I've been doing this for a long time. So yeah, make sure the dog has at least two series of shots. Third series shot is great. So um, okay, um, I'm going to start wrapping this up here uh, in a couple of minutes. I appreciate all of you guys. Uh, for being here. I think this is fantastic. I hope you like my, I hope the quality of this is better. I'm trying to kind of get a better and better quality. I'm using a, a really nice camera now, you know, my, my camera, I shoot everything with. Um, yeah, I know somebody's going to go after my mom now. That's what every time, if I say my mom smacked me, like, oh, your mother was abusive. Or my mother, did, you're... first of all, let me tell you something, guys. Um, we all have our, 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 our um, grudges to bear or what do we, what do we have to bear? crosses to bear, whether you're Christian or not, we have our crosses to bear. Um, but the um, idea really is life is tough, right? Nobody grew up in a perfect life. Um, you try to make it as perfect as you can, and you do the best you can. Don't criticize people. You know, your mother did the best job she could do. Your father did the best job they could do. And you as a parent are doing the best job you can do. And to, to put this all in context, you as a dog owner 
are doing the very, very best you can do. And I applaud that. I applaud the fact that you're here, you're taking your time on a Saturday morning to listen to me chat about your dog's safety because it shows me you really care, all of you guys. Every single one of you guys, 163 of you who are here now and however many hundreds of you, 300 or something who have been in and out, have done your very, very best with your dog. So that's very good. You're, you try, try to do the best. Try, every day you wake up, here's a little motivation. Every day you wake up, kiss your husband or wife, your boyfriend or girlfriend, or, or your dog if you don't have one of those, or if you have all three, kiss all three. Hopefully not, you know what I mean. But, and enjoy your day. Make the most out of it. Turn the news off. Um, make sure you, oh, it's a super chat, right? Okay. I'm trying not to stress so much about the super chats, but it's very kind of you to do a super chat. My 14-week-old pup gets excited to get in the Jeep crate, but won't come out when we're getting to the destination, even if it's home. I've been baiting him out, but is there, yeah, so Jimmy does that. Jimmy, that's why Janet handed me that, because Jimmy does that. Jimmy's notorious for doing that. So um, the first couple of times, just grab him and pull him out and then have something really, really happy to, to get to, right? So like, don't lure him out with something, but um, just like say, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And it, also if you use a really stern voice, like, hey, let's go they'll get out. And right when they get out, like take them inside and feed them or take them inside and give them some treats. Don't lure them. Give them a big reward to get out. If they see the lure, they go, eh, not ever. But you're trying to set a precedent in their mind that something good's going to happen. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you guys very much. And like I said, just take a chill pill. Your dog, you know why your dog is happy? Because your dog can't watch the news. That's why. I swear, I swear to you, if your dog could watch CNN, MSNBC, Fox, all any news station, I don't care what the news station is, they'd be miserable. They'd be depressed. There would be a higher rate of dog suicide than ever. So do, do yourself a favor. Um, do something beautiful for your partner, your husband or wife today. Do something beautiful for your dog today. Enjoy the day. Look at how amazing your life is. No matter what you're lacking, you got more than you're lacking. If you're on a computer talking to me, you got a pretty damn good life. So Thank you for that. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for your friendship. Love you guys. I really appreciate you guys being here. And I'm going to, in 10 minutes, I'll be in the members section. If you're a member of my site, I'll see you there. And uh, I'll be back soon. Thanks so much. Take care. Good job, honey. Somebody said...